What's up everybody? Dan here with another Tool Tuesday slash hammer video. Um, we are moving along. We've looked at some regular inexpensive hammers, some titanium hammers, um, just kind of a whole array of different modern framing hammers out there. And we're kind of to a point in the video series where I was having trouble on how I wanted to do this particular video because it's a video about a hammer that everybody knows or almost everybody knows of. They've been around for an extremely long time and they are really durable. There's some pros, there's some cons, but the thing that I had a problem with with this particular hammer video was that it's an S-Wing hammer and everybody knows about this hammer. It's a very, very common hammer. Um, S-Wing as a company has been around since 1923, so they're coming up on um, let's see, 96 years now, and they've made a hammer very similar to this, although a little bit shorter, not the milled face, probably a little bit more curled, but more or less this style design with a leather washer handle instead of this nylon grip handle that they have nowadays. Um, so it's a very tried and true hammer. The part that I had an issue with when I was trying to decide how to make this video is this hammer's really plain. It's got all the basic features that you want in a hammer, but it doesn't have any of the bells and whistles that the new hammers are coming out with. So as I went to the store and I was looking at the different types of S-Wing hammers, they have additional styles now that they have um, to offer. This one here is very similar to this one. This one's a 22 ounce framing hammer, milled face. This one's 19 ounces. The difference between this uh, standard conventional style of hammer and this one is that this one has a little bit more of a, um, it's not quite an I-beam profile, but it's a more of a rectangular um, cast, molded, I would say, maybe a molded, not a machined uh, handle here, metal handle. It's still one piece and it still has a nylon grip, but it's more of a cast thing than a machined like this one. Um, it does have the magnetic nail holder in the top, which is a nice feature, and then it's got this side puller on the side here. Uh, as far as this one, it's made in the U.S. like all of S-Wing's hammers are, so that's kind of a cool feature. And then the other hammer here is this one here. This is a 24 ounce, so it's a little bit heavier, milled face, and if you notice on the back side, it's got this uh, little protrusion as it were and that is basically for lining studs up you can twist studs so if you're doing uh, some sort of floor decking framing walls things like that and you've got a stud that's got a slight, slight twist to it you can throw your hammer on there and you can give it a little bit of a tweak and adjust it get it into line so again it's got a very similar cast handle section here and it's also got the uh, molded um, anti-shock grip Here's where it gets a little confusing to me. They've got three different hammers. They have the conventional one. They have this one with the 2x4 straightener on it. And then they have this one with the magnetic nail set and then the side puller. To me, it seems like if they really wanted to, they could have combined these two hammer features into one hammer or three features. The magnetic nail set, the side puller, and then this little... Um, stud straightener and combine these two hammers into one and just had one and done. Instead you've got two different hammers that both have unique features but they don't overlap and they're not in one. So it's kind of an odd thing that S-Wing did. I don't know if um, when they were designing them if they figured that certain features weaken the hammer or strengthen the hammer and they just figured that this would be more of a uh, novelty feature not so many people would buy it or this would be vice versa who knows i don't i don't actually understand why s-wing did what they did so they take the tried and true old hammer left it alone which is nice i like that but then they introduced some new hammers and what could have been kind of a one and done really cool featured hammer they split the features up into two different hammers so anyways um, that's just my two cents on that. As far as the S-Wing, the conventional one, 
This is the one where I've told about in the past where, you know, you get an overstrike and you can take a finger off very easily with this because it's like a dull hatchet more or less. Um, but as far as just a really super durable hammer that's been around for many, many years and you know it's going to stand up, the handles don't slide off frequently, um, this is one to go with. I like the feel of these hammers. They drive nails pretty well. The uh, nylon polymer grip that they have now, um, it's an anti-shock grip that came out, the new proprietary material or whatever came out in, I believe, 2001. They patented it, so all their new hammers have this blue proprietary grip. It absorbs some of the impact. Some people might not like it because it is an all-metal handle, but Honestly, I've never seen one broken personally, so not to say that they haven't, I haven't seen them. You can pretty much do anything you want with one of these hammers, they're really indestructible. Um, I keep harping on it, you know, if you're doing form work, uh, building forms, stripping forms, that kind of stuff where you're dealing with concrete and reinforcing steel rebar, um, that can do a number on a wood or fiberglass hander, handled hammer, whereas these steel handled shanks, they're they're really, really durable. So, um, I took these out back, drove some nails. This time, I actually drove into a couple 2x4s that were slapped together. It was kind of like a built-up uh, corner post, an old one that we pulled out. And it isn't the super, super hard 4x4 that I've used in all my other videos and looked like a novice with.
So we just went out, we drove some nails. Um, I'll talk quickly on what my impressions were of the three different hammers, starting with the lightest hammer, which is 19 ounces, and moving on up to the heaviest, which is the 22 ounce hammer. The 19 ounce hammer, this is the one with the nail setter, magnetic nail setter on top, and the uh, nail puller on the side, which is the same style as the deluge hammer, the titanium headed deluge hammer that we had. Um, it's got the I-beam-ish style of shank, it's all one piece. The nail setter worked really well. There wasn't a lot of movement for the nail, so you know when I swung it, it went in where I needed it to, and easy follow up, a couple more whacks and drove the nail. The claw, obviously, it's a standard hammer claw. There's no real fancy bells and whistles on this portion of the hammer. But this side nail puller, I was kind of, as you saw in the video, I tried it with the nail when it was, I don't know, maybe an inch proud of the wood and there just isn't enough movement in this or range to actually engage a nail when it's that far out. I would have had to drive the nail in further just to get the uh, within the range of what this is capable of getting on a nail and pulling it. Also if it's not out proud enough or sticking out far enough you can't fit this on. So it's got a really small window. That being said the nail puller did work really well. The side leverage, you get a huge amount of leverage. It pulled the nail out quite well. Once it gets out far enough, then you can put the regular claw on it and pull it. The next hammer, which is the uh, 22 ounce, this is the tried and true. It's been around, not much has changed. I think pretty much the only thing other than, you know, as a bring new renditions in, the claws straighten out, they put a mill face on it, they get rid of the um, leather washer handle and put the neoprene slash fiberglass blend handle on and I believe in 2001 they got a patented anti-vibration mixture that they've added on all their hammers. Um, so this one worked really well. These are small faced hammers. The head, the actual striking surface is much smaller than say like the stiletto style hammer where it's a much broader face so if you aren't familiar with using a smaller faced hammer like this you might have a little bit of issue trying to get the nail and not hit the edge of it depending on how precise you are or not. Uh, I started out with a hammer similar to this it was a fiberglass craftsman hammer um, 20 something years ago it was an orange handled 22 21 ounce framing hammer milled face I gave it to one of my buddies, he actually still uses it to this day, so it's it's stuck in there. Um, but this one, it works. It's it's a good hammer. Then on up to the heaviest, which is a 24 ounce hammer here. This has the stud straightener, liner, bender, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't have any other bells and whistles or special features other than this notch here. It is a little bit heavier, so you should hypothetically be able to drive nails a little bit more easily just because it has more mass. Um, but on the whole, it's a pretty pretty basic hammer. So again, claws on the back. You can really wrench on these and kind of yank them and not feel like you're going to break the handle, which is a nice feature. So overall, I would say that the S-Wing hammers are a really good value for their money. Like I said, $25 to $35 is about the price range for these three hammers. You can find them all over the place. I haven't seen them broken personally in the past. Maybe these newer style with that kind of cast I-beam uh, handle shaft will break. I don't know. I haven't seen it. Um, yeah, it's just a really durable hammer if you're going to be working on form work working around concrete, working around re reinforcing bar, things like that. Um, you're not going to feel bad about using one of these hammers in that situation. So anyways, we will be following up with more hammer videos. I think we've got two or three more coming up. And uh, remember to like, subscribe, share, leave comments. Um, if you notice the last Deluge hammer video, we've got some really good comments that came in on that with people that have used that hammer. They have tips and tricks and just different ways of doing things. So definitely, if you've got an experience with a hammer like this or any of the others, leave some comments. That way we all kind of get your experience too and we share our own. So there's a lot of people out there 
like I said, I'm not an expert on everything, and I'm hardly an expert on anything, <laughs> so, but I do have a pretty good wide range of experiences that I try and share and enjoy sharing, so, um, yeah, just remember, subscribe, like, share, comment, all those things really, really help us. The more we are able to uh, show that to YouTube, the more they can allow us to bring more videos to you. So, anyways, uh, until next time, this is Dan with Dan